So Colossal Bioscience is a company that just announced they cloned a dire wolf. And there's a lot of people saying a lot of different things, so let's try and narrow down on what we do know and what's being rumored and essentially just what the opinions are about this, because I am conflicted about it. Because there's some science that sounds really interesting, but also a lot that's being done with that science that's being done incorrectly in how it's communicated. Now first off, Colossal Bioscience has said on their Reddit account that actually time broke the embargo but also they've been simultaneously ready for a media firestorm with everything else they've put out, including images with George R.R. R. Martin, who is a big investor in their company. Additionally, George R.R. R. Martin was already teasing on his own website something coming out in the beginning of April, which seems to be this. So seemingly they were very well prepared and they're just lying on that Reddit account, which is a little bit suspect to me, although I don't know all the details, so that could be incorrect. As for what they did, they sequenced the DNA of a dire wolf genome, and from that saw some of the changes that were happening between it and gray wolves, and were able to just kind of knock back a few of the different chemicals in the DNA in order to make it more like that of the dire wolf in a few different locations. In fact, it's 14 loci across 20 genes. And so the loci is kind of just where it is along the chromosome, and then the gene is the actual part of DNA that makes all the information and holds it. That brings us to the first really interesting part about this, which is they got gray wolf DNA from blood. And that sounds like, oh, well, yeah, why should that matter? Blood obviously has DNA in it, except it really doesn't. Red blood cells in mammals don't really have a nucleus where the DNA would be preserved, which means it's really hard to actually get DNA from blood. And this is one of the first times, if not the first time, it's been done successfully. So that's huge. This means instead of different scientists needing to take actual like flesh or skin samples from whatever they're studying, they can potentially just take blood and use their method and get a good genetic understanding of the organism. There's been also some debate about how they actually modified that wolf DNA into what's supposed to be closer to dire wolf DNA. And that's because they first said they used CRISPR, but CRISPR doesn't sound like what they did where you're just changing a few of the chemicals in there. In CRISPR, you would actually insert the entire thing into part of that DNA. Essentially, you'd open the DNA up, pop in the new gene, and then close that DNA back up. That doesn't seem to be what's happening, and that's just my understanding as a layman in a lot of this genetic science, but seemingly that's at least what they're arguing was happening, and it doesn't seem like it tracks with what they later said was happening. So there needs to be better communication about what they did, and that's gonna be a reoccurring theme throughout the rest of this. There needs to be better communication. In fact, there's some people who have suggested that they actually know what genes make white colored wolves, and considering these wolves are white, just like the ones in George R. R. Martin's books, potentially they just did that and then also made a few other changes, as opposed to just trying to base it off of what was happening in the dire wolf genome. And that does make it look like the dire wolves from Game of Thrones, and we don't necessarily know what dire wolves looked like, so maybe that's accurate, but also maybe it's not. Maybe there is a big influence coming from the investor to try and make them look show ready. Additionally, if these genes are put in, there are things called exons and introns, which means you have your strand of DNA, but there's little blocks of it that code for the protein that's being made and little blocks of it that do nothing. So essentially there's little blocks called the introns that are just taken out and the exons are what are actually being used. What this means is maybe what they've actually changed in the DNA isn't being used at all. Now, even if these genes are being expressed, there's nothing to say that it's something too out of the ordinary. They say that these offspring are larger than what we see in modern wolves, but that doesn't really mean anything when they haven't actually published good data on how large most normal wolves are compared to their wolves. They just go, oh yeah, they're almost 80 pounds at five months or six months. Okay. How heavy is a normal wolf at that age? Is it within the confines of what we would expect? And also with that DNA being around 70,000 years old in some cases that they got from this alleged dire wolf, are we sure that it's actually a dire wolf? They're very morphologically similar. And so potentially what's happening is they just took DNA from an old gray wolf, a fossil gray wolf, that would have been larger because of Bergman's rules which basically just states that, hey, as you start to get colder, it's more efficient to be larger because you can retain heat better. We also need to look at their diets and treatments and how they've been treated throughout their entire lives. Because for example, if you also just inject a wolf with something like wolf growth hormone, it's going to end up larger. And we don't know how these animals are being treated and maintained. It's just, it's not published. I'm not saying that they absolutely did this, but we just don't know, and that's a problem when it comes to the actual science behind what they're proposing. 
So all of this is to say that there's a lot of questions about essentially what DNA they used, what changes they made, and also still just want to point out these aren't dire wolves. They are wolves, gray wolves, with some dire wolf DNA maybe in them. And that's really important to think about because when you think about a lot of the human population, there's some Neanderthal DNA in us. Does that make us Homo Neanderthalus or are we still Homo sapiens? We're still Homo sapiens. It doesn't make sense to go, oh, it's a dire wolf when you're only changing a little bit of what it was doing. They're also stating that there is a large preserve where these animals are living. And essentially, hey, look, it's totally walled off. We're not gonna tell you where it is because we don't want these animals to actually, uh, you know, have any conflict with people. And especially for things like poachers to come in because believe it or not, I think there's a lot of people who would go, yes, there's a dire wolf. I want that on my wall. So they are gonna need to have very good protection for these animals in this very large enclosure that they've said they've set up for them. Additionally, they need to take other protections because for example, if a fox gets in there with parvo or rabies, these animals may not be well prepared to deal with that, which means they would then die. So I'm sorry, I feel like this company is potentially asking for just a bunch of dead dogs because they aren't doing everything. And again, they may not be. They may not be asking for that. They may be covering every single one of the issues that I brought up, but they haven't told anyone any of that, which is the really, really frustrating part. And finally, it feels silly to bring back an animal that was living during the ice ages into the modern day when the planet is warming so rapidly. It's not necessarily the same environment that they had adapted and evolved for. So if they were even true dire wolves and they were brought back, why? You're basically asking for something that is going to go extinct again, or alternatively, that is only going to be a zoo animal. It doesn't make a lot of sense to me, especially if you're trying to talk about conservation like Colossal Biosciences says they are. There are museum specimens of plenty of different animals that are endangered today that also have very high levels of inbreeding. For example, cheetahs made it into Africa exactly once. So you could use museum examples to introduce more genetic diversity there. Or the kakapo in New Zealand, very similarly, highly inbred or even the narrow-headed garter snake, which I work on. It's a small garter snake, but it also lives in very restricted areas. And because of that, each one of those populations has only been able to inbreed. If we were able to introduce more genetic diversity through different clones of these animals from museum specimens that lived hundreds of years ago, that would be really great for the overall biodiversity and genetic diversity of these species. With that said, if you want to see science done properly, feel free to donate to that Northern Arizona University Garter Snake Research Lab, where, you know, it goes through peer review before being part of a media blitz. And again, a lot of this just comes down to the way that this was communicated. I think once there's actually publications about it, which the company has indicated there will be, I think it will help resolve a lot of these issues. There might still be some of them knocking about, but I think it will help resolve a lot of them. And that means they're gonna to have to work with a lot of people. They're gonna to have to work with people who study modern gray wolves to show that these animals are actually different. They're gonna to have to work with people who study extinct gray wolves and extinct dire wolves to show that it is more of a dire wolf than a gray wolf. And then they're gonna to have to work with a lot of geneticists, some of whom have already published on the dire wolf. So there's potentially some conflict that might happen there. It's really strange to see that they're saying, oh, actually it is really similar to a gray wolf when a paper from 2021 stated, oh yeah, actually it's much further and more distantly related to gray wolves than we previously thought. And that's just a little bit of that. One of those people is apparently working with them on this genome. So that's wonderful, but it's not published. It means nothing. And so with that said, I think that Colossal Bioscience is doing itself a disservice here if it actually cares about the bioscience it claims it's doing. If it actually cared about that, it wouldn't be doing this kind of, oh, hey, look, here's our media blitz, and don't worry, we'll publish something eventually. They would have had these come out at the same time, which is, again, it's just very frustrating to see because now there's all this kind of misinformation floating around about these dire wolves that they probably also don't want. And with all that said, I think I can narrow down my opinions on colossal biosciences to just a few sentences. And I think that they're basically just a tech bro company that is relying on people not understanding science to get them to donate money to them. And that's seemingly working, but they're kind of like Jurassic Park in that they're not actually making extinct animals, they're making genetically modified zoo animals. Nothing more and nothing less.